when we get away from just thinking about individuals who have beliefs and thinking about groups who have beliefs, then we have to think more about the, let's call it the risks and benefits of having those beliefs. And so previous research on so-called cults, I don't really like to use that term and we, we can get into why, but when we talk about those sort of closed groups, as you say, uh, what seems to be fairly apparent is that despite the per potential negative impact of conspiracy beliefs or other kinds of delusion-like beliefs, there is a significant benefit from the group affiliation. And we're seeing that now even with online groups, right? They don't have to be a classic cult where someone's sequestered in some sort of compound the way the Branch Davidians were. These can even be online social, uh, social media networks. And so the reality is that despite the cost that one incurs for this belief relative to mainstream society, there's a huge potential benefit to this newfound affiliation with perhaps a closed but also tighter knit smaller group that one is able to enjoy through that affiliation. And so that's, that's really what's, be, what, what's being weighed in, in that sort of calculus. Uh, and there is certainly some evidence, I, I don't wanna use this as a sort of overarching stereotype too much, but there is certainly some evidence that when we talk about so-called cults, a lot of the people who do end up in those situations are people who were socially isolated in one way or another. So when they then affiliate with this new group, that is enormously powerful uh, and allows them to have that cognitive dissonance where even though their belief might diverge from facts or mainstream uh, thinking, uh, there's a benefit that, that then gets uh, folded into the way people uh, pro uh, cognitively process those beliefs. 